So welcome her to the family, guys. Anyway, it's time to do just a vlog, an update on a few things. I got a complaint that's going to come out in this, um, and I'm going to talk about a couple of other videos, some changes as well. But let's uh, let's start the vlog with an update, and I'm going to update both of the heating systems here in the greenhouse, which is why we're out here in the greenhouse. So let me point this up. And we're going to talk about the uh, solar heating system first. We're going to talk about the solar heating system, uh, which is up and running, and I do have the valve installed. Uh, if you can see, in the center of the pump is a silver disc. It's actually a screw. Uh, as it turns out, when I had that installed, when I had the pump installed on the domestic hot water system, I had accidentally turned the screw in too far, shutting the pump off entirely. Pump wasn't working, and I'm wondering why the hot water wasn't working. Well, I did the same thing here, but I caught it uh, because I wasn't seeing water coming out, and fixed it. Everything's running great. I've got it on medium speed. High speed's a little cool, and low speed doesn't put enough water in. So it's on high speed. It's working right now. Today, right this minute, it's 47 degrees outside um, in far west Texas, which is cold for us. I know that people in the northeast are suffering from all these winter storms and all this snow, so I'm not getting any sympathy for a 47 degree day. Let me get behind the camera, though, because I'd like to show you what we did do uh, for the valve. So when I did the initial video on this, uh, I said there, I, I could not find if there was a check valve in this Badger pump, so it needs a check valve. Well, I, I didn't install a check valve, but again, remembering that we do the three, um, the three R's, which are reuse, repurpose, recycle, you'll notice that Rube Goldberg setup of uh, PVC there. That was using and reusing parts I already had. Uh, to simply do a one and a half inch transition to a half inch PEX pipe. So that's what I did there. Didn't cost me anything, didn't create a demand for any new product because it was product I already had. So the PEX pipe just stays, it's steadily dropping, comes down here to a PEX valve where uh, when I turn the system off or when the system's turned off and we know it's, uh, we know it's going to get, or we think it might freeze overnight, then I take this valve turn the valve, it breaks the uh, suction and it allows air up into the system. The air goes up into the system and drains downward and also drains everything out uh, through, the, um, through the pipes that you can see shadowed up there. Uh, and that eliminates, uh, the need, uh, eliminates any freezing that might occur. I've turned this off now. Let's go take a peek at the, uh, at the system though. First of all, let me show you the water temperature in the whole system. Now this is a temperature roughly of the 4,000 um, gallons of water, 60.1. As we come over here to the main, uh, uh, not the main, but the propane hot water system, which I did the video on, it's running, it's up and running right now, and you'll see the water temperature is right at 120 degrees. We come up here and just introduce water from the uh, main system in. This is the 60 degree water. And it's going into the bottom of this tank and forcing water up from the top of the tank. So it's introducing cold water to the bottom. And you can see the steam right there coming out. This water was 122 degrees when we started. And it's mixing and it's going to raise the temperature a little bit. I guess what I'm getting at, and taking a long way to say, is that both systems are now fully operational. They're doing a great job in here, and the exhaust from the um, from the, the propane system heats the um, heats the air, which helps us quite a bit on the um, 
uh, keeping the tomatoes from uh, getting burned. Well, again, you're doing constant tweaking to systems like this, particularly if you don't have if you don't have guidance as to somebody in your immediate area that's doing a aquaponics greenhouse. I'm the only one in the area with an aquaponics greenhouse, so um, it's a little bit rough. But part of the problem we've had, as you just mentioned, was the burning of the tomato plants up on the ceiling. You know, if it's a 30 degree night. That's 30 degree temperature settles on those uh, polycarbonate panels and then tries to transfer right in. That's an issue that everybody has with greenhouses. Well, it, it has burned the tomatoes up there. The temperature down here is staying steady at about 50 degrees, well, 42 to 50 degrees. So what I'm going to do, the reason I've got my hand pointing at nothing here, you see I have an electrical connection right there. So it's gonna be very easy for me to take and install a fan that just simply blows in that direction just to, just to circulate that 30 degree air off of my tomatoes and maybe bring it up to 36 or 38 where it won't get burned. I was given a couple of old, air, um, I guess they're refrigerator compressors that have fans on them and I'm going to take those fans because they're a low energy fan and just install one here at this break where there's an electric and one over here I don't believe you can see that electric, but um, just put those two fans blowing straight up. When the lights are on, which is nighttime, then it'll blow the air and just kind of keep it from frosting. Just another touch we're doing here to help tweak this a little bit better. But uh, I did want to um, get in front of the camera. I did want to say that both heating systems are working perfectly. The um, the brake, the air brake valve that I just showed you. That works great, it drains the whole water system. And if there's any left in a joint, it'll expand this way and not upward and outward and break the, uh, break the joint or break the irrigation pipe. So we've got that much settled. Let's move on. So I might have talked about the cabbage patch before, and I'm, you know, I, I'm sorry if I have. This is a cabbage patch, and it's roughly uh, eight by eight. What I did in here was I broadcast, I just, just threw a whole bunch of cabbage seeds out in there, probably a thousand seeds, and what sprouted, sprouted. I also transplanted six that I had uh, actually sprouted, and I want to show you one of those six. Now the tall plants you see there are fava beans. Fava beans are nitrogen fixers unless they're actually going to seed, in other words, giving you the fava beans. Well, I've got no pollinators here, so they're not going to seed, but what they're doing is fixing nitrogen in the soil. And perhaps right now the cabbage are pulling that nitrogen out as the fava beans fix it. Now, why did I broadcast, or why did I mention that I broadcast this? Because what I do in here is, instead of planting 25 or so, that's about all this patch will hold is 25 cabbage, I put a thousand seeds in and what I'm doing is I'm going through and thinning and as I thin that's dinner for the night for example I'm not going to pull this out but here's one that probably needs thinning it's got a cat it's got there's another cabbage over here and another cabbage over here and one a big one here so this one could probably be thinned well those are greens for a meal and it's that's what I'm doing is thinning them down now right here I can't really see how good I'm showing you guys. Right here is a cabbage that's almost the size of a bowling ball right now. And look at those big beautiful green leaves around it. Think of what a huge stuffed cabbage you could make out of those green leaves. So that thing is getting pretty close to harvest size right now. That's why we're going to have to get that California cooler up. Next to it's another one that I had um, I don't believe I transplanted that one. And I can't see the other survivors that I transplanted from this angle, but I'm sure they're close to bowling ball size. What I'm getting at is that if you're going to take everything indoors and do a greenhouse type situation or have a small garden, you need to think, again, my favorite saying that's been ruined, think outside of the box. Don't plant if you want a hundred plants, don't plant a hundred plants, plant a thousand and pick those young greens out as you go because that gives you food as you're waiting for your food to come up. A great idea, it's worked perfectly for us here, it'll work great for you in an in a outdoor garden or in a greenhouse, but in a greenhouse situation like this where I don't have a lot of soil to work with, 
I think that's an excellent way of doing things. It's what I did here, it's what I did with my daikon radishes, and you can do it and you should do it. Well, speaking of the daikon radishes, I've got a radish I've got to harvest right now. But let's take a look at the temperature right now. We are down to 75 degrees coming out of the um, propane tank, in other words, the hot water tank that uses propane. We are up to 75 degrees, and um, not bad for 20 minutes worth of propane. All right, now if I can step over here without falling on my butt. Again, a broadcast patch here. I've got um, <clears throat> Chinese celery that's just going nuts. Debbie doesn't like celery that much. I do, but you can only eat so much celery. Got a couple of very old green pepper plants that look very sorry, but they're still putting out peppers. A few fava beans in here as well, because I wanted that nitrogen fixer. But I had broadcast radishes in this area. I can get my foot around here without falling in the pond. There we go. I've got a radish here that I want to pull out. I want to make sure it's the right one before I yank it out of here. Okay. It looks like I might get two of them. This is a German giant red radish. And we're going to get hooked with two of them. German giant red radish. How about that? It's a radish. Now I know, I'm not going to cut it open on camera, but I know when I cut it open from the ones I've done in the past, it's solid inside. If you don't eat radishes because radishes are hot, I understand that. And little radishes are hot. These are quite mild. And look at the size of them. I can take this and I can make pickled radish with it or I can make radish in our salad. I could even do a roasted or, or a fried radish, uh, which there are recipes now. I just recommend you search online for them. When you get to the point where you've got a radish like this, but look at that. And it made room, let's see, yep, it made room for the daikons around it to continue to grow. Now you want the daikons to be about three times this size. <laughs> Again, I gotta get my, uh, gotta get myself out of that patch. It's hard because with this um, um, muscle issue I have, the left leg is not really that useful anymore. Well, I moved out here uh, really to talk about visitors, but I've got stuff around me too. I think I'm going to tie it all together if you bear with me a minute. Uh, and if you follow what we do, you know that I've had a rash of visitors and I've had a couple of them that I wasn't too happy with. Well, I just had another one. Another, another weird one. Now, when a guy that lives in a bottle house off-grid in the middle of the desert says somebody's weird, they're weird, trust me. Anyway, um, the fellow came, stayed a couple hours, and then when my back was turned, jumped in his vehicle and took off, and I haven't heard from him since. This after he called me probably 40 times. He called me about 10 times before he made his trip, and then every few hours as he made his trip, he made a telephone call to give me his progress. I don't know why. Anyway. Here's what I think happened, and it ties into this stuff that's around me. You know, we operate on the three R's. Reuse, repurpose, recycle. That's what we do here. First of all, we do it because that's how you uh, lower your impact on the planet. And second of all, I just simply don't have money. I don't have the money to buy new stuff. And now that I know it, I know if I had the money, I wouldn't buy all new stuff. I would try to do what we're doing here. So I got a phone call. The guy was due on Thursday. I got a phone call Wednesday night from a friend of mine that said, hey, I got a bunch of stuff I need to get rid of. I want it gone right away. Do you want it? If you don't want it, I'm going to make other arrangements. Now, I got burned a few years ago when a guy said the same thing to me. I said, yeah, give me about two days and I'll be there. Well, it just so happened that another guy he talked to said, oh, hey, I want it. I'll be right there. Got it. I never did get it. I learned when somebody says, hey, I need stuff I want to go away, you need to go and get it or somebody else will. So I told my friend I'd go and get it. Now what I got was this 
three-part sink. Now these three-part sinks are about 1200 bucks brand new, but you buy a used one, they're about $500. Guy gave me a stainless steel three-part sink. I need that. We'll get into it in future videos why I need it, but I need that. Now I also had this. This is a restaurant prep station. You have your vegetables or your meats, whatever, under here and up in here. Then you've got a cutting board up here that you do all your prep work on. Now the compressor is burned out, the electronics are burned out, but this is a nice insulated um, cabinet that I can use. And I mean, I'm handy enough, I can put a new compressor in if I want it. I have a specific use in mind for this that we'll probably get into in, in, again in a future video. The fellow also had a third cabinet. As it turned out, it was rotted out on the one side, so all it's good for is as a potato planter, but it's a good potato planter. A uh, truckload and a half of um, firewood, a couple of old compressors with, uh, with um, some good components that I can reuse, um, a turkey fryer. Now that I don't need one, he had a turkey fryer for me. And, a, uh, and this is a nice thing, he's got a portable building that he had, it's about half built, and it's about 10 by 12. I got that. Catch was, I had to get it Thursday morning. Oh, and he had a, um, um, an IBC tote, which I needed an IBC tote for the campground to give them running water. All had to go away pretty quick, so I told him I would be there the next morning, Thursday morning, when my guest was due to arrive. Told the guest, you know, I've got work to, I've got to go get this stuff, and um, uh, you know, get yourself settled in, and then we'll we'll get acquainted later on. Apparently, it's not what he expected. Maybe the place was anyway. He left, and um, so that's number three that we've had. Uh, I wasn't going to pass up. As it turns out, the used value of all the stuff I got was pretty close to two thousand dollars, so I couldn't pass on that. But here's what I want to talk about real quickly, and although if you can call this quickly. I like, Debbie and I like to have visitors. We love to show people what we've done here, what's going on here, what you can learn and what you can do, what you can take away to wherever you live and do. We love it. We love to have you come and visit. But I, I'm not too hot on weirdness, and you have to understand, and this is the important thing, because I'm weird, so weirdness we can deal with. But here's the important thing you have to understand. This is a working poultry and produce farm. We have things that have to be done in the morning and in the evening and all day long. They're called chores. These things have to be done. The animals don't care whether I've got a guest here. They don't care if I had uh, the next president of the United States here. They just want to eat. That's all. They just want to eat. I got to do their. Uh, I have to do their. Do my chores. If you come to visit us, you're going to be on your own a bit. We have to do our chores. It's not little house on the prairie where everybody's the clothes that they're wearing all came from wardrobe and are clean and neatly pressed. We get dirty here. It sometimes is dusty here. When that guy got here, it was cold and cloudy and going to rain. It just isn't always the nicest because it's a off-grid rural area. Bear that in mind if you want to come and visit. That we have things that have to be done that this is essentially the, uh, the desert, the wilderness. And also, since I moved the travel trailer, we don't have a place to put anybody up. That's why we no longer take work exchange guests. We don't have a place to put you. If you're self-contained, if you have a tent, a trailer, uh, uh, um, an RV, uh, or you're, you've got a van that you're sleeping in or a pickup that you're sleeping in, that's fine, but we can't put you up. I, I think this fellow came here expecting to be put up, and when he saw I didn't have a way of putting him up, he left. You know, you have to bear that in mind. Love to have you. We want to have you. You can either come and visit, um, walk around, visit, and then go about and do your thing, or you can come, stay, stay overnight, stay for several days. You can either pay the... Um, uh, the camping fee, or you can help me here, or you can do both. I mean, I, I, I don't mind if you do both. But anyway, I wanted to tell you that because um, uh, I, I don't like misunderstandings because this guy had said it was his first vacation in seven years. He left here for a reason, and it wasn't a good reason, and so his first vacation in seven years starts out on a really bad foot for him. So I felt a little bit bad for him. Uh, and I'd like to avoid that in the future. Visit us, please. But remember what I just said. 
And finally for this vlog, just today, we changed up our, our mind, changed up our mind, boy, I can't, that's, that's an old Michigan saying. We changed our mind about what we were going to do with the air tubes, which are right down there. And I've discussed those in the past. I'm going to discuss them in the upcoming video on this project I wanted to talk to you about right now. I looked online for something called a California cooler. I looked all around. I found a couple of references to it. No videos. Zero YouTube videos about a California cooler. Well, right away, that raised the priority on making a California cooler in the greenhouse way up. Because I'll do a video on it. And I really think it's something that a lot of people can use, especially the way we're going to do it. Now, I'm going to leave this out as a teaser because I don't want to tell you how I'm going to do it here. There's about 27,000 people on YouTube saying, just imagine my house is going to be here and this will be here and this will be No, 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 no. Show me as you're building it or show me that when it's done. So, I'm going to put, ha, I'm going to do that right now though. I'm going to go right here and put a California cooler in here. We're going to build it. I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do a video as we do the California cooler, so you can see how to duplicate it. We're going to build a California cooler. Show you why you need a California cooler, and hopefully, if you're in the right area and you've got the right um, the right construction which most of you will, I'll tell you that right up front, most of you will be able to build a California cooler should you wish to. Sounds good? Great. Now I've got to do it as I have money, so I, this is the one thing. If you guys want to help, it's going to run me, I did a cost estimate, it's going to run me about $250 in material to build the thing. On the main channel page, Eco Ranch USA, youtube.com slash Eco Ranch USA, all one word, the main channel page is a donate button. It's right there. I'll also put a link to it down. If you want to help, we're trying to raise 250 bucks specifically for the California cooler. Got to get it done pretty quick because I'm going to be harvesting cabbages very soon and I need a place to store those cabbages where it's not too cold, too hot, or too damp. California cooler. What is it? We'll find out together. So I'm trying to raise 250 for that. If you can donate a little bit, love to have it because I've got to buy insulation and I've got to buy I've got to buy lumber. That all adds up. We're going to take these windows out, put the California cooler in, and then that prep station I showed you is going to go on the back side of the California cooler because in time the greenhouse is getting complete. It's getting, it's getting tripled in size. So I'm pretty excited, as you can tell. I'm excited on one hand and a little disappointed about some of the um, visitors we've had. That's why I want to tell you about the expectations and gosh, that's about it for now. Got more videos coming about specific things, but I wanted to do a, a, a vlog update because no more, um, at least for now, until I figure out how to do a live stream again with the new crapola that uh, YouTube's got. It's just going to be vlog. So that's the vlog for this week. This, I don't know, might do one every week. I'm going to try, but you know, time gets away. But until I do do that vlog in the next video, it's Robert Earl out here in the greenhouse at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center in far west Texas saying see you later.